Hi, everyone. This is Elizabeth. She's six years old, and she's half Scottish and half Malaysian. Her best friend is Indian, who is also her neighbor. Elizabeth doesn't see a race, and she doesn't see ethnicity, because she's still young. So she thinks that everyone in the world who has a dark skin is Indian, <laughs> and everyone in the world who has a fair skin is Scottish, like her dad. <laughs> this is Mei Li. Mei Li's dad is Malaysian. Her mom is Irish. Mei Li has a British passport. She grew up in Malaysia. She went to kindergarten in Malaysia. She went to school in Malaysia. She went to university in Malaysia. Every time she goes to travel abroad and she comes back home to Malaysia and goes through the customs, she's being asked, what's the purpose of your visit? <laughs> what she told me, every time she's standing there with the customer's officer, she's afraid that he won't let her in to her own country and will tell her, sorry, you have to go back home. <laughs> so the question here is, where is home? Is my home where my passport says I am from? Is my home where I speak local language? Is my home where my best friends follow the same traditions and customs? So eight years ago, when my journey started, I was Elizabeth. Eight years later, when I'm in Malaysia, I'm Mei Li. So let me tell you my story, how it all began, and where it led me to. I was born in a country called Lithuania. For 20 plus years, this was the view through my window at my parents' house. It wasn't the whole year like this, but most of the year. <laughs> but most of the year, when it's a winter time, or when it's an autumn, or when it's an early spring, the trees look like that. The buildings always look like that. They always look gray. The country, I would say 99.9% .9 of population are Caucasians, which means the skin tone is the same as mine. I would say around 99.9% .9 of population follow one religion. I would say 99.9% .9 of people speak same language, which is Lithuanian, and that's the only language they speak, unless they study some other language at school or at university. Then, living in this environment, I was awarded a scholarship to go and to study to Southeast Asia, to Indonesia. And that's from seeing what you just seen before, how the shift in my visual field changed. So together with my color palette, the one I saw in front of me, some other things started to change as well. I started seeing people that have a different skin tone than I do, that are born into families that speak one, two, three, or four languages, in their family. I started seeing people who pray to different gods, who go to the different worship places. I started meeting the people and hearing the stories about how they celebrate New Year, not on December 31st, but in January, in February, in August, <laughs> you know, in September. And Still, with my childish naiveness, I believed that no matter how different we are, we should still be same in certain ways. So I came to the biggest realization, together with this change of my environment and of a different beliefs coming into me, that the truth I lived in for 20 years is not the only truth that exists in the world. So what I understood is the truth doesn't equal the truth. So if New Year for me is at the end of December, 
It doesn't mean that I am the only one who is right. Those people who celebrate New Year in August are equally right because it's their truth. And what led me to this realization is my open-mindedness and childhood naive heart that took me through all the Asian countries I traveled, I lived, or I studied. I think that was the biggest gift that I got, is that I opened myself and accepted all the cultures and all the information and all the stories that were told to me, and I didn't judge them through my own personal truth, but I accepted this as the truth of theirs, and I merged it together with mine. And that's when I came to the country that accepted me most than any other country I ever lived before. I felt at home in Malaysia when I came here four years ago. And I do think that the biggest reason for that is because Malaysia is the most diverse, is the most beautiful and colorful country I've ever lived in. So, what I saw here was fusion of all the truths I've ever experienced during my travels. I saw different nationalities being neighbors. I saw different ethnicities being neighbors, being sitting near the one stall in the Pasar Malam. I saw different ethnicities being family members. And they all lived in peace, in harmony, and in respect. And that's what made me fall in love with Malaysia. But there was one but. <laughs> what I saw among my friends, and when I read in the newspapers, were two different stories. And I started asking questions, naturally. Why is it so that the truth I'm experiencing doesn't equal the truth that I read about. Why you, as a nation, being so diverse, so peaceful, so beautiful, so unified, still want to label yourselves in certain boxes? Why do you want to put certain quotas on yourself in a education, in a business? Because when I go back to my friends, I see this diversity. I see all of them together like nobody's business, chit-chatting with each other, having fun together, eating together, going to open houses to each other, celebrating all the festivities together and seeing no problem. So I thought to myself, why can't it just be like this? Why can't it just be just one beautiful Malaysia? Why sometimes we are being told to forget how beautiful we are. In order not to be a passive viewer and consumer of all information, I decided to do something about it. And I came up with this photo storytelling project called Same Same. Yes, it comes from the slogan, Same Same but Different, which is widely famous in Asia. And that's how I saw Malaysia. All the same, but also different at the same time. So this project, Same Same, is a storytelling project which aims to remind Malaysians of how beautifully diverse they are, how lucky they are to live in such a beautiful country with many languages, with many colors, with many religions, and with many, many holidays. <laughs> so I started photographing, I started photographing individuals who come out of mixed race marriages. I started photographing young couples who come from different ethnicities. And I also documented families who also come from different cultures and they live together for a long time and they already have offsprings. So in this photo, you can see a Malay boy who is in love with a Chindian girl. So let me tell you some of the stories that I heard from the people I met, I photographed, and the stories they told me. I do believe that a foundation of the nation 
is a family. The families are the little pieces of the puzzle that hold the whole nation and the whole country together. And if the family is made from two individuals who come through two different cultural backgrounds, religious backgrounds, then the family members are very tolerant and very open to all the environment that is different from them because they're already in love with someone who is different. So this is the family of a Chindian man and a Malay Thai woman. And one of the most beautiful things in their story for me was how back in the days they used to celebrate all the festivals, which is Christmas, New Year on December, Hari Raya, Deepavali, and Chinese New Year. <laughs> so can you imagine how lucky were the kids with all those festivals? They told me that during the Christmas, they will set up the Christmas tree in their house and hit the gifts for the kids in the evening, so when they wake up in the morning, they can find those gifts. During Chinese New Year, their house is full of their Chinese relatives, you know, playing mahjong. During Hari Raya, the house is open to the whole kampung. During Deepavali, it's all lit up in a beautiful light. Here is another couple. Uh, her name is Arina, and his name is Benjamin. Or, right now, he's Benjamin bin Abdullah. He's from United States, and she's from Penang. They met here in university, they fell in love, and in August, they got married. And when I asked Irina, what's the biggest joy and celebration for you, it's in your relationship, she told me, because he converted to my religion because out of love. And he nodded with agreement to that. He said, love is above everything for me. It's above religion, it's above the culture, it's above the language. If two hearts are talking, then the rest becomes secondary. Here is a couple. The girl is from Penang, and the boy is from India. So the funny story about these two is that when I was hanging an exhibition, and I was hanging this image, a family came to see how the exhibition was being set up, and they saw this, paint, this photo being hanged on the wall. And the family was with a little boy, around maybe age six. So the boy looked at the photo, and he looked at the description. And the description says, Chinese, heart, Indian. And the boy asked, what is this? I said, oh, it's a Chinese, Malaysian, Malaysian, falling in love with Indian. And he's like, so she's from China? I said, no, no, she's from Malaysia. So why do you write Chinese? And mom came, grabbed him by the hand and said, like, oh, I'm so sorry, he still doesn't understand. I say, and that's okay. And that's the whole purpose of this project, you know, to bring the unity back and to clear all those separations. And that boy was exactly what I was aiming to achieve with my project. And besides that, she damn loves curry and he hates curry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Anna and Eric. Anna is from Penang, and Eric is from Germany. When they were having a dinner at her parents' house, Anna looked at Eric and said, spoon. And Eric was shocked. Why you have to be so rude with me? Why can't you just ask, could you please pass me the spoon? And Anna was confused as well. She said, what's wrong? He's like, you are very rude to me. And then the discussion arose, and they found out that in Anna's culture, the more close you are with somebody, the less compliments you use. So if you say spoon, please, it means you're not that close yet. If you say spoon, <laughs> it means you are damn close. Whereas in Eric's culture, the politeness came first in the shortness. This is Hirania. Hirania is Chindian. Her mom is Chinese, her dad is Indian. She can speak fluently Tamil, English, Malay, and Mandarin Chinese without studying any of those languages at school. How lucky Malaysians you are. How lucky you are. This is Jennifer. She's half Irish, half Malaysian. When I ask Jennifer, so you were based here, you were raised here, now you have children. How do you educate your children in this multicultural society? And the answer she gave me was this. 
I brought up my kids not to think about races. We don't box our friends. We are all Malaysians. So, I do understand that the merge of cultures uh, brings a fear of losing a part of your identity. But I think that if we follow this pattern of thoughts, we would be still living in the dark ages with our fears of being assimilated with the differences. So, merge of cultures out of love, I believe, is nothing else than just a beautiful progress towards a bright future. So, six years ago, my friend, my friends and I, from Mexico, Poland, Japan, Australia, Austria, England, Malaysia, Lithuania, and Romania, it was a single individual of each, were climbing a volcano in Indonesia, a volcano called Rinjani. It was a three days hike, it was a very difficult hike, but I remember all of us sitting around the campfire and talking about this. Look at us, we all come from different cultures, we all grew up in different countries, we all speak different languages, but somehow here we are trying to achieve the peak of the mountain which glues us together, this experience enriches all of us and we become friends. And if one day we become the presidents and the leaders of our nations, there is no way we will go into war or conflict with each other because we are friends from the beginning. So my dear friends, my dear Malaysians, this photo are my colleagues in Kuala Lumpur. They are all Malaysians, they are all different, but they are all the same. So I want to leave you with one thing. Tomorrow, when you're going to wake up in the morning, call your friend from different, different ethnicity, invite Himoha over the tea to the mamak, over the breakfast lunch, and talk about the differences and the similarities that makes you who you are and what makes you Malaysians. And declare that day your same, same day. Thank you.